This is going to be a three-part series covering three different BNC weapons and kind of going over the philosophy of each and every one of them. This is part one, and as you read from the title, this is the USW. So first and foremost, this is not the first unboxing. I have put substantial amounts of rounds through this gun in my testing, and I am currently waiting on my Form 1s to come back on two out of three of these weapons. This one, however, is going to be the first of them uh, that should be coming back, and the one that I actually intend on carrying for work. Okay, so, really cheap plastic box. Nothing exciting about it. User manual, full color. They give us everything that we need to know about the weapon, weapon system, disassembly, so on and so forth. Okay, so really good manual actually. Back to the box. Moving the gun away. Sorry, not sorry. We get a sling. Um, so they also include a cleaning kit. You get your cleaning rod, a nylon bristled brush, a brass brush, nylon brush, and a cotton-ish brush. Really cool of them to include that. Much better than the uh, injection molded piece of crap one that Glock gives you. You get three different back straps, uh, well two including the one that's on the gun. You get this U-shaped tool and to be honest with you I'm still not sure what this is for and you get an allen wrench which is used for the aim point micro. We also get an additional front sight post and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, on to the weapon. I'm just going to give you guys a second to take all of this in. All right, so if it's not, I keep turning that on by accident. So if it's not blindingly obvious, this is a Sphinx that has been bought by BNT, and they are now producing it in their own way, and in a much better way, if I do say so myself. Um, so right out of the gate, this is a goofy looking weapon. There's no denying that. However, there is a great purpose behind its goofiness. You can see on the side here we have a detent and it's spring loaded under a very tight spring tension. And here where your index finger would ride we have a hook. And what that does is allows you to have a folding stock that goes along the side of the frame and down and locks into place. So when you push your index finger up it releases the stock, the stock flips back, and you have a PDW. So you can see why that would be beneficial. Um, I'm going to guess my aim point's probably on. And no, the dot isn't actually that big. It just looks gigantic on screen. I don't know why. Um, it is a 2 MOA dot. So pretty precise. They also give you their BNT branded Inforce light. Um, the aim point is included. Everything, everything that you see is included. Um, they also give you a thread protector. Mine's not on because I'm very commonly running a can. So one thing that would be kind of weird initially for a lot of people is the fact that these run BNT mags. 
and you can get the extended mags and actually have them on order and I wanted to get this out to you guys once I had my Form 1 back so this video made a little bit more sense as to why I would have this for an entry weapon for work but I couldn't wait any longer because I have two more BNTs to review. So this is an SP-01 magazine um, or the Sphinx magazine as well. They're all kind of the same thing or even the CZ-75 I believe works. So if you're looking for extra mags, um, look no further than the CZ-75, the SP-01 or the Sphinx itself. Okay, so let's safety check our weapon really quick. Ouch. Okay, so let's safety check our weapon really quick. We are clear. No mag in. And this gun has been oiled to no end just because I was storing it for a while and that's usually what I do with my guns when I store them. Um, take that for what you will. So in a lot of the reviews that I read, there was a lot of speculation as to how hard it would be to take this gun down with this being a fixed mount here. And another thing that I would like to add is unlike your RMRs or anything else that would be mounted to a weapon, this is non-reciprocating. So when you were shooting, your slide's moving. That's not. So during disassembly, you can take this part off if you would like. I don't know why you would. There's honestly really no need. I'm a few thousand rounds into this weapon so far, and I have yet to do it. So um, you have your standard AMB controls, or at least AMB decock. Um, again, safety checking, no mag. So single action pull. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. A little bit of creep. Very crisp. And then to simulate what it would be like to shoot double action. Take up. It is really, really heavy, which I actually like. So when you're in a really high stress situation, you're indexed up, um, you're wearing gloves, Having something with a three and a half pound trigger would be really, well, not easy, but you have a higher chance of having a negligent discharge. So the fact that this is double action uh, on the first round, double to single, is something that I actually really like because a lot of the times you're under really stressful situations. And if you go from, you know, orange to red and you don't intend to, but your adrenaline's pump and three and a half pounds isn't anything at all when you're under that much stress. So uh, there's definitely benefits to it. All right, so let's tear this down just because there's so much hype about, uh, you know, oh, it looks so difficult. It, it's not, there's, it's not difficult to take down at all. So we line our two notches up, push our um, release, from the other side and pull the trigger and smooth as butter it comes off so I could make an ASMR video out of this gun just by how smooth everything is and yes everything is really over oiled because this has been in storage um, and it's in storage just because I'm waiting for Again, my forum ones to come back so I can SBR this, but just listen to how smooth everything interfaces. So nice. So inside of the frame is very CZ slash SP01 slash Sphinx like. Here's your hammer. I don't usually do that for what it's worth. Um, and I don't recommend you do it either. You shouldn't ever have a hammer free falling into nothing. But I wanted to be able to show you guys that. And again, this is why you don't have to take this off, is you can access everything that you need to from right there. Decock. So there's the frame. And again, it's very familiar to a lot of you who have the CZ-75 or the SP-01 or Sphinx. Um, yeah. So what's going to look different mainly other than the rear of this is obviously going to be the slide and they give you 
a really, really cool cut that just makes this thing an absolute joy to rack. So the serrations aren't super sharp, but this shelf just makes it, I mean, it's awesome. As I said in a lot of my other videos, I'm always racking my weapons from up here anyways. So um, the fact that it's not something that you would slingshot back here and in my opinion, do it the wrong way. Um, you know, that's a big plus for me. So let's take the recoil assembly out. Very typical, standard, just single recoil spring inside of a captive steel rod. Barrel lifts up and out. There you go. There's your whole slide assembly. So those of you reviewers out there, uh, truth about guns, and there was one other actually that said, oh, it's got to be, you know, a monster to take down. Clearly, this is super difficult. The other thing, too, is the rails are inverted from what you would normally see. The cuts are notched into the slide and into the frame. So the way that they fit together is actually pretty neat. At least I think it is. So smooth. Okay. So we're just going to go back to those two marks. Or thereabouts. It doesn't have to be dead nuts on. Um, as I found out in the multiple cleanings. Again, I've put a few thousand rounds through this in the week or two that I've owned it. Okay. It goes back together function check and the proper way of function checking any gun is you hold the trigger to the rear, back your slide, and at least your first round will go off. So you are function checked. Okay, so what about holsters? Well, if you guys have seen my duty belt, you know that I have the Epic or Epoch or E-P-O-C-H, however you want to pronounce it. This is B&T's proprietary holster, and you should get one of these with your weapon if you're a blue label. Um, I don't know if they give them to civilians or not, but that's what I was told is it was kind of a blue label only thing. So, with your folding stock, again, it goes, it's just three pieces that go in here. Um, I, I have a buddy who lives across the street from me who owns the stock, had him order it. Um, so it's not in my possession, but as soon as I get that approval back, it'll take me five minutes to put a stock on. <clears throat> and with the stock on, it does in fact really easily, with a light, thank you, go in. And then you also have your optics cover. Now this total package is about the same size, maybe a little bit longer, obviously a little bit thicker, than my Glock 21 Everyday Duty Carry Gun. So... Why not have one that's also a PDW that has a flip-out folding stock, a red dot, um, and eventually a 30-round extended magazine, and just that much more control. Now, for releasing the weapon, you see this tab down here. Use your thumb, just like my actual duty holster. And the first click pops your hood up. One more time. So, you go to reach for your weapon, thumb down, and then you push down further and you just very simply draw your weapon out. Again, thumb in, and this pad is huge. Unlike my Black Hawk, um, it's kind of small, and you have to really think about where you're going with this one. It's just, I mean, you're just there. Again, it's just very, very fast to deploy. It's obviously faster on a belt too, because you know, you're going to the same spot every single time, and if you train with it, you should be very proficient and fast. Okay, so that green thing I showed you earlier, little plastic ramp thing, um, I would put it on there, but I think it would look goofy, and what that is, is just your front sight. And this is for a worst case scenario, your one-year battery life has somehow failed you and um, you don't have anything to aim off of. 
Well, if you look through the back of this, and it's really going to be hard to show on camera without it being green, actually. Um, you do have aiming points on the back of the sight and the front of the sight post, and it's good enough for me to hit a 9-inch plate at 25 yards very fast with this off. So, worst case scenario, your uh, red dot fails, you still have more than enough capability of hitting a human-sized target. So, that is that. Um, for you guys who are just cool gun enthusiasts, absolutely 1000% buy one of these. Um, for you guys who are looking for an everyday carry or, uh, you know, a bedside gun, probably not. Probably not. Uh, to my law enforcement officers out there, or other recovery agents, or armed private detectives, you guys, you would be remiss to pass this one up if you ever came across one. Now, that said, they are really expensive. They tip the scales at about 2500 bucks. But again, all-inclusive PDW that gives you everything that you need out of the box in a super small package. I mean, you have all of the capabilities of, you know, any other submachine gun, obviously not full auto, but something you could very easily carry on your hip slash duty holster that isn't much bigger than your duty weapon already, but it's something that you could shoulder and get really accurate shots out to 100 yards without any problem at all. So the size of a CZ-75 or an SP-01, if you discount this, I mean, why not? So if it was only to here, this is about how big the other weapon would be. Now if you chucked an RMR on there, um, there you go, that's the whole size. So it is about the same weight as the SP-01. They've done some things to make this lighter. The lower half of this, see that seam right there? And that seam under the trigger guard, this is glass injected polymer. Um, very strong polymer. I've dropped this gun numerous times in training and it's yet to break. But if you do break it, it's just a torque screw on the inside of the frame and two more over here. And it's a very secure lockup. And these frames are actually readily available and you can buy them in aluminum if you would like. So lots of things available, lots of options, lots of choices. Really, really cool battery of arms. I really love that this is here. Because um, again, I am operating my weapons up here all of the time, every single time anyways. Anything that I can use to get that much more purchase on a weapon to charge it and ensure that, you know, I'm actually seating around. And again, for press checks, it's perfect. Uh, you're not slipping off of anything. I am because I'm saturated in oil, but press checks makes everything easy. And again, the stressful situation thing, having double action only to single action. Um, it's something that's beneficial to me. I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, you shouldn't be that stressed out. Well, yeah, you go kick down a door at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, not know who's on the other side. <laughs> so see how, see how uh, calm and level-headed you are. Um, and if you are, that's how you get effing killed. So, this is the B&T USW. This is part one of my uh, B&T show-off. This isn't an actual unboxing, though I'm still probably going to label the video as such. Because I did, in fact, unbox it. And everything's still in there, rightfully so. So, I'll call it what I want. Um, so, this is going to go back on my duty belt. And yes, you guys, uh, I am qualified with this now. And I am actually carrying this every day at work. Even without the... Form 1. A lot of you guys commented when I was shooting the 519, like, oh man, like, you know, you can actually shoot. Or, you know, like when I did the live video with the XD. This thing, I'm grouping about 1 inch at 25 yards. It makes... Shooting this gun is cheating. It feels like you're cheating. Simply put, it feels like cheating. It, it is that easy to shoot. It's that easy to shoot that well. And it's that easy to shoot retardedly fast. 
very cool gun. If you have the purpose for it, or if you're just a collector, or if you're the tactical guy who is part of a militia that feels like you need something like this, uh, whatever your case may be, if you feel justified to buy it and you have the money to do so, I definitely very, very highly recommend it. And yeah, that's that. See you in part two.